What lawful basis was there for you to ask for her ID? I don't know. Um, in order to detain somebody, what do you have to have legally? Do you know? Mm, I do not know the law legally. Okay. Doesn't there have to be reasonable suspicion that the person committed a criminal offense or violated a law? Because I'm gonna, I, I don't know the law exactly. You don't know when I'm, an officer is allowed to detain somebody. This is Sergeant Jennifer Larson and Lieutenant Donald Malazzo, both police officers that had served for over 20 years, being deposed for the illegal apprehension and arrest of a woman named Samantha, aka Pink Camera Magic, on YouTube, who had been recording at the Cook County Courthouse building from outside. Hey ma'am, you know this is a public building? Exactly, that's why I'm recording okay. it. It's also a court facility? Yep. Which there is a judicial law or judicial order that says that you cannot tape this building. Can I see that order? Yes, come on in. I'll, we're going to check your IDs too. Oh, no, I'm not going in. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. We're going to run you too. No, that's we're all right. We're going to get your name. We're going to do a report and everything. So come on in. Um, right? No. No, yeah, you're going to come in now. Am I being detained? Yes. For what? Because right now we, you are doing something suspicious. That's not a reason to detain anybody. Well, it is for Dana. Come on. It's really not. Let's go so inside, I'm just going to stay here. And continue recording. Okay. You're going to come in, and we're going to find out who you are and what you're doing here. No, you're not. Okay. All right, who's got cuffs? She does not want to go agreeably. The interaction begins with Lieutenant Milazzo approaching Samantha and stating that she can't record in a public building, and that is enough reason for him to detain her as she didn't provide her ID. But what Milazzo doesn't know is that what he's doing is actually illegal, as it is completely legal to take photographs or film public places in all states unless oral conversations are recorded, which is not the case here. Okay. I'm being detained for just taking pictures of the building? Yes, ma'am. You're doing something suspicious, and we need to know who you are and why you're doing it. Okay? Are you familiar with the First Amendment? Yes. I am. Really? Put Let's your hands behind your back. Come on. Wow. I tried to do this nicely. You are aware of Homeland Security, right? After noticing multiple times that he was being recorded, Milazzo finally decided to aggressively grab Samantha's camera with which she was recording him to later detain her and take her inside. Call your lawyer. Okay, call your lawyer. That includes my camera as far as um, mm -hmm. consent. Well, it's already on. Are you so... familiar with the Fourth Amendment? Oh, great. Why do we always get the crazies? I don't know. That second person in the scene, the one wearing the body cam, is Sergeant Jennifer Larson, and what she and Lieutenant Milazzo don't seem to realize is that what they are doing is absolutely outside the boundaries of the law, and that Samantha knows that. Denying yet again showing her ID, Samantha notices that Lieutenant Milazzo is doing something shady with her camera. Did you delete well, my footage? Do you want to cooperate or not? I'm remaining silent. It is only making it worse. Do you want to give us Remain an ID? Silent. Remain silent. I don't consent to searches. We're not going to search her. We're, We're asking for an ID. If this wasn't enough, the officers then mockingly laugh at her after she invokes her right to remain silent. What the f*** is going on today? I don't know. Every crazy loon in the building is coming. All we're asking for an ID. We're asking for an ID. We'll do, it. we'll do a report and go on your way with your camera. Otherwise, I'm going to confiscate the camera and we're going to take it downstairs and we'll print you. Because you're suspicious. I'm remaining silent. Seeing no cooperation on her side, the officers then decide to give Samantha an ultimatum in an attempt to finally settle the situation. Okay, this is your choice. You can either give us an ID so that we can do a report on this and find out who you are, or we're going to take you in front of the presiding judge. He's going to hold you in contempt, which means that he can hold you for as long as he wants. I'm remaining silent. Okay, let's do it. Ten minutes went by, and then Lieutenant Milazzo finally came back with news, or better called threats, against Samantha, who, as everyone should do, just remained in silence. Okay. Um, yes. We're, we're going to probably take her in front of the judge. Okay. Uh, he's going to hold her in contempt for, I think right now he's doing 90 days. Okay. So, is that okay with you? Remain silent. Okay, but you realize you're going to go to Cook County Jail for 90 days. Remain silent. Okay. Okay. 
Now you have an option. All you have to do is show us an ID so that we can do a report, and we'll let you go on your way. I have an option. Yeah. We told you that before. Because right now you're just obstructing and you're in contempt. Obstructing what? You're obstructing us from doing our job. I'm remaining silent. All right, cuff her. Let's get her purse. Ken. Get her stuff. I don't consent to searches. Well, we don't care anymore. Samantha was finally handcuffed and arrested for obstruction to later be freed without any charges. But what the officers are unaware of is that not only did they commit an illegal act, but multiple. Unlawful detainment, intimidation, illegal arrest, dereliction of duty, unlawful search and destruction of private property. Shortly after, Samantha was able to hire one of the best lawyers in the country and sued Cook County for multiple civil rights violations. The case has been going on for a few years now and the conclusion is not yet known but a part of all of this that we have is the following footage of both the deposition of lieutenant milazzo and sergeant jennifer larson what unfolded in the following never before seen footage is one of the biggest and most shocking proofs of ignorance of the law and ineptitude in police history is it against the law to take pictures of a courthouse from outside No, not that I know. Okay. Is it lawful to arrest somebody for taking pictures outside of the courthouse? Of the courthouse? No, not that I know. Okay. Is there something sus- so. Keep your voice up, please. Okay. Sorry. So I gotta get every word because it's on video. Okay. Are you familiar with this case at all? Which case? The, the case that brings us here today that you're testifying in. Yes. Okay, and, and in a nutshell, what's the case about? I would say that Amanda is, I guess I called you to say that she was uh, outside videoing when she shouldn't have been. So she's saying we violated her amendment rights. You're correct. Um, wh when you say when she shouldn't have been, what does that mean? Was she doing something wrong? Uh, just something unusual, what us as officers would consider unusual. Unusual, okay. Having shown zero knowledge of the law, Samantha's lawyer then decides to push Sergeant Jennifer further to try to make her slip even more. Um, depending on where you are in the country, Mormons are unusual, right? Depending on where you are, it might be unusual to see a Mormon. Do you get to detain Mormons in those places? I don't, I don't know if people detain Mormons. Do I don't know if they detain Mormons. I Would it be lawful? Just because it's unusual? No, I don't. Okay. Know. Is there something unlawful about recording outside of a building? I'm sorry, what was the question? Let me ask you this. Was Miss doing anything illegal when she was detained? I know I would say it was not illegal, unusual. Talking about unusual things, the statement that follows is something a police officer should never even be allowed to say. Um, in order to detain somebody, what do you have to have legally? Do you know? I do not know the law legally. And if you still think that at least Lieutenant Milazzo knew what he was doing, well, you're wrong. What would you do if one of those people said to you, what's the difference between arrest and detain? What would your answer be? Call legal. Mr. Gorman, seated to your left? No. Sheriff has their own legal. Oh, okay. Their own legal who helps them understand things like the difference between arrest and detain? Yes. Gotcha. Was there a lawful basis to handcuff her? Yes. Okay, and what was that lawful basis? Officer safety. Here, Lieutenant Milazzo has just confirmed not to know the difference between an arrest and a detainment, an occasion in which if they need help, he indicates they just go ahead and call the office's lawyer to help them. The question remains then, how can someone work 27 years as a police officer and not know the law? Did you have any reasonable suspicion that she was committing a crime? We had reasonable suspicion to ask her what she was doing and why she was doing it just to get who she was and why. You and I agree on that, that you had the right to ask her whatever you wanted to ask her. Did you have the right to put her in handcuffs? Officer safety. For the security of the officers, yes. Okay. What made her a threat? 
her refusing to give any information that was requested of her? Was she legally obligated to give that information? When an officer has asked her for security purposes to give her identity up, yes, we do have the right to ask for an identity of somebody for our safety. 20 years of service and Sergeant Larson believes that she's not safe unless she runs your name. Not the kind of cop I would like to encounter if I'm being pulled over. Have you ever heard of something called a Terry search or a Terry frisk? I have. Okay, what is that? Um, I'm not going to say exactly. I don't know the law. Okay. Seeing how she has no clue of anything related to law, Samantha's lawyer then decides to make up a hypothetical scenario to further prove his point on how wrong the arrest was. A police officer goes over to somebody on the street. Let's call the person Mr. Plaintiff. Okay. Police officer goes to Mr. Plaintiff and says, hey, let me see your ID. And Mr. Plaintiff says, uh, no. Is the officer now allowed to put Mr. Plaintiff in handcuffs and detain him? No object. It's a hypothetical and calls for speculation. Yeah. You can answer. Okay. Um, I do believe, yes, for officer safety, they do have the right. Doesn't there have to be reasonable suspicion that the person committed a criminal offense or violated a law? As I'm going to, I don't know the law exactly. At least we saw so far how Jennifer takes responsibility and accepts that she doesn't know the law. In big contrast to her lieutenant, who instead pretends not to understand any of the questions the lawyer asks and makes fun of the situation. If you could go back in time to the day that you arrested her, would you still arrest her? So you're asking me if I can go back in time? Yeah. I don't know how I could do that. Okay, did you understand my question? I did, and you're asking me to suppose whether or not I can go back in time. I can't. So you can't tell me if you would still arrest her? I can't tell you what would happen on that day if I went back in time, no. Okay, um, are, are you, is this an attempt to be funny? Not a bit. Are you trying to answer my questions? I'm trying to answer your question. You really can't figure this out because you can't wrap your head around time travel. I'm gonna, That's what I'm gonna you're object. saying? Again, I mean, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to object. It's getting to be harassing again. Uh, I mean, is this what the question is? Hypothetical tra time travel backwards? Is that really how you interpreted the question? Also? Is that what you're asking? If he could go back in time, would he do it differently? Is that not what you're asking? Yeah, that is what I asked him. Going back to Sergeant Jennifer, the interrogation continues and her responses don't get any better as time goes on. Is there any reasonable suspicion that she was committing a crime, yes or no? We weren't sure what she was doing. Okay, so if you don't know what somebody's doing, do you have reasonable suspicion that they're doing anything in particular? No, but we have a reasonable response to ask what she was doing. Right. Agreed. You could ask her what she's doing. And right. when she refuses to answer, are you now allowed to detain her? Yes. Who told you this? that you get to detain people who are videoing and refuse to identify themselves when asked. That is the face of someone getting caught, being held accountable and humiliated for their illicit actions. Despite always refusing to admit that she had done wrong, everything was captured on camera and the answer is clear as water at this point. But this is not over, as in complete opposite to Sergeant Larson, Lieutenant Milazzo wasn't going to go down without a fight. Are you familiar with the Fourth Amendment, by the way? Vaguely. What does it say in your own vague terms? Uh, no illegal search and seizure. Right, unless there's? Probable cause. Or? Okay. That's about all I know. Okay, all right, good enough. He said that's about all I know. All right, um, now, there was somebody else who asked you the same question that I just asked you about your familiarity with the Fourth Amendment. Uh, who's in this room right now? Do you know who that person was? My client, Ms. asked you that, didn't she? I don't recall. She asked you, are you familiar with the Fourth Amendment? You don't remember that? No. Lieutenant Milazzo admits not to recall neither the location in which this happened, nor who actually asked him, when in reality, all of us know that it was Samantha and he's just playing dumb, and everything was recorded as we saw before. Call your lawyer. Okay, call your lawyer. That includes my camera as far as um, mm -hmm. consent. Well, it's already on. Are you so. familiar with the Fourth Amendment? Oh, great. 
Why do we always get the creeps? I don't know. After recalling the incident, the lawyer brings up his offensive comment towards Samantha at the time. If I tell you that your answer was, oh great, why do we always get the crazies? Would you dispute that? No. Does that sound like something you would say to somebody? That's something I did say that day, yes. So you remember saying that? Yes. Okay. Do you remember saying that in response to the question, are you familiar with the Fourth Amendment? No, I just remember saying it. Why is it that you felt she was one of the crazies? When people act in a way that is not in their best interest. How is she acting that was not in her best interest? Well, at any time, all she had to do was identify herself. We could have done our report. You have an option. All you have to do is show us an ID so that we could do a report, and we'll let you go on your way. And everything could have gone the own. And if uh, if somebody were to threaten you that unless you comply with their demands, they're going to put you in handcuffs, would you automatically necessarily comply with their demands? Yes. Not object. You would. Calls for speculation. He was able to answer. So, so you would. So even if uh, even if there's somebody who is acting as a law enforcement officer, giving you an unlawful order, threatening you with detainment or arrest or 90 days jail, if you don't comply with their unlawful demands, you would still comply? Yes. Alrighty. D is that what you expected her to do, to comply? Yes. Having heard multiple times the need for a person to identify himself when requested by a police officer, the lawyer then decides to question Lieutenant Milazzo further in the topic. Is there a law that requires people to identify themselves when requested by law enforcement? I don't know. And when asked if he had deleted the files from his camera, he blatantly denies it, despite it all having been recorded by the body cam the sergeant had at the moment. Did you delete her pictures? No. Who did? Don't know. You don't know who deleted her pictures? No. By the time you got in front of Judge Peter Felice, they were deleted, weren't they? As far as I know, they were still on there. You grabbed her camera yes. away from her outside, did you not? Yes. From that point until you were in front of Judge Peter Felice, did she ever hold her camera again? No. Okay, so you had it the entire time. Yes. Didn't Judge Peter Felice talk to you about whether the pictures had been deleted? He asked for the the memory thing so he could delete them. He asked for the memory thing so he could delete them. Not only did Milazzo prove the lawyer's point of the pictures being deleted, but he also had just involved a judge in the same illicit act he's being accused for. You just said that he asked you for the memory card because he wanted to delete the pictures. Is that your testimony? Yes. Okay. And if he were to testify at some point in time that he absolutely, categorically, did not delete those pictures, then would you want to change your answer as to whether you or one of your people did? I'm going to object, calls for speculation. <coughs> no one had custody of the camera but me. Okay. Would it have been lawful for you to delete her pictures? I don't know. But what do you think? Are you allowed to go over to people's pictures and delete them? No. Without a court order? No. All right. That would be a violation of which amendment, do you know? No. If up until now he had been able to resist when questioned about his unlawful actions against Samantha when she requested a lawyer after being arrested, was the last nail in the coffin for Lieutenant Milazzo. I, what do you do if somebody says they want to talk to a lawyer and you have them in handcuffs? We allow them to call a lawyer. Do you, do you, keep, do you keep asking them questions? on the case. Oh, I got you. Okay, tell me the case in which you would continue to ask questions for, of somebody in custody after they ask for a lawyer. If we're doing an investigation, we're going to ask. I got you. Okay. Do you know which amendment it is that allows people to demand a lawyer? Do you have any idea? No. Have you ever read anybody the Miranda rights? No. You've never read anybody their Miranda rights? No. Have you ever arrested anybody? No. Other than Ms. Berquist? No. Um, and, uh, and you don't know the Miranda rights? Not offhand, no. All right. Um, when you arrest somebody, do you have to advise them that they have the right to remain silent? Yes. 
do you have to advise them that they have the right to an attorney? Yes. Do you have to advise them that if they cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided to them? Yes. Okay. Um, now, what if somebody says, yes, I want to talk to an attorney? Do you get to keep asking them questions? Or do you have to call a lawyer for them before you want to ask any more questions? I don't know. You don't know? You don't know if you're allowed to keep asking questions of somebody in custody after they ask for a lawyer? No. How long have you been employed under, uh, at Cook County Sheriff's? 27 years. 27 years. I imagine you only became a lieutenant recently? No. How long ago did you become a lieutenant? 22 years ago. You've been a lieutenant for 22 years and you don't know the Miranda rights? Yes. The case remains open, but this is immaculate evidence proving how wrong the police officers were against Samantha. If you enjoyed this video, watch this one and we'll see you next time.